We also want to greet our live stream brethren as well. Welcome to our meeting. I want to get us started on the right note this morning. I'm going to read a, a couple of scriptures from the book of Hebrews. The first one is in Hebrews chapter 10, beginning with the 19th verse, and then I'll be reading from the 12th chapter as well. Hebrews 10, verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now chapter 12, beginning with the 18th verse, chapter 12, verse 18. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Amen. Amen. The background of that particular passage is the giving of the law at Mount Sinai, probably one of the key moments in all of God's dealing with mankind was his coming down on the mountain of Sinai and appearing to the people of Israel there in the wilderness and giving his law. It was at Sinai that God made a covenant with Israel. His intention was to fulfill his words to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and that the people of Israel would become a, a holy nation, a kingdom of priests set apart Amen. from all the other nations of the earth. You'll recall that Moses and his brother Aaron went up into the presence of the Lord on Sinai and spoke with the Lord for the people of Israel there. The people were going to encounter at Sinai the presence of God. And God gave them specific instructions about how to prepare themselves for this meeting. For example, they were to wash their garments. They were to refrain from marital relations. God also commanded that limits be set around the mountain so that no one could approach the mountain or even touch it. And if, if they did come too close or touch the mountain, God said that they were to be killed. And God himself warned that if the people came too close, that he would, the scripture says, break out against them, or in other words, put them to death. And so on that holy day, the presence of God descended on Mount Sinai. There was, the scripture says there was a fire, there was a thick darkness, there was thunder, and there was the blast of a trumpet, and the whole mountain shook. And that must have been a, a terrifying scene. All the people of Israel, it says, were afraid of the presence of the Lord. Even Moses, who was used to talking with God at this point, Moses was afraid. And the people heard the very voice of God speaking to them out of the darkness there on Mount Sinai. The Ten Commandments were actually first spoken by the Lord in the hearing of the people of Israel. But the scripture says when the people saw the presence of the Lord on the mountain, when they heard this voice like a trumpet speaking, it says they stood at a distance and they were afraid and they begged Moses to speak to the Lord for them. They could not bear to hear the voice of the Lord. They were afraid of the Lord. They thought they would die if the Lord kept speaking to them. And Moses told them that God had appeared to them and spoke to them in this way to make them fear. 
so that they would obey his word. So that's a little synopsis of what happened at Mount Sinai and how the law began or how the old covenant was established. The people were afraid to come near. In fact, they kept themselves at a distance from God. The Lord spoke his law, but the people could not bear to hear it. And so a mediator was necessary. Moses became a, me, a, a mediator. He stood between the people and God and spoke to both parties. <clears throat> now this morning, we are also coming to the presence of the Lord. But our coming is not like the people of Israel at Sinai. For example, we're not coming to a physical mountain on earth. The days of worshiping on a certain holy mountain have ended. <clears throat> now we come to Mount Zion herself, the city of God. This means that we have access to heaven itself, not a temporary or a symbolic presence. As awesome as Sinai was, it was temporary, a temporary presence. Even the tabernacle was a symbolic presence, a temporary meeting place. But we, we don't come to a temporary meeting place. We come to heaven itself. Mm -hmm. Not into a symbolic presence, but into the most holy place. And we worship him in spirit and in truth, not as a mere formality, not through a ritualistic service. We do not come trembling in fear, but with confidence by the new and living way that has been opened for us by the blood of Jesus. This new and living way that God has opened, it's called new because it's of a different order. It's a different kind of way. Amen. It's not new simply chronologically, but it's a different kind of way of approaching God altogether. Amen. It's called a living way that we approach God in a, in a new and living way, yeah. as opposed to dead, lifeless ritual or ceremony. It's a living way in that we ourselves have been made alive unto God. Or it's a living way that we do not have to fear being killed as we draw near, as the people of Israel were quite literally afraid for their very lives. We don't, we don't have that fear in the presence of God. We come to hear the word of the Lord too. Not speaking law, but speaking words of grace and truth. Indeed, the law came through Moses, but grace and truth has come through Jesus Christ. And Jesus did not come just to give us another law. He came to make his Father known. Amen. We do not come as people who must be made to obey out of fear, but as people who have been made new, who have the very law of God written on our hearts and put in our minds. New covenant people do not have to be compelled to worship God or obey Him. That is, in fact, our first inclination. In fact, New Covenant people do not have to be told to start worshiping when the service starts because they always worship God. Amen. For we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Amen. Philippians Amen. chapter 3, verse 3. The very idea of a worship service that starts and then ends Amen. at a certain time is Old Covenant, not yeah. New Covenant. Amen. Now, we do also have a mediator, but our mediator is greater than Moses. Yeah. Our mediator is the very Son of God, Amen. and our mediator takes us all the way to the Father. Yes. He does not leave us trembling at a distance. And like the people of Israel, we too are a chosen people, a holy nation of priests unto God. But our holy status is not on the basis of obedience to the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus has become the high priest of a new covenant. It's not like the covenant God made with the people of Israel. You remember Israel broke that covenant. And God longed for a people who would have a heart to do his will. And that's what Jesus is doing. He is creating a people who have a heart for God. And, and that is true new covenant worship. 
There are too many people today who are still worshiping at Mount Sinai. They are fearful, they lack confidence, and they remain at a distance. And they know nothing but failure, attempting to live by the law for their acceptance with God. But we do not come to Mount Sinai this morning. We are not coming in fear, but with confidence by the blood of Jesus. Amen. We are not at a distance, but have been brought near into the most holy place, not as unworthy sinners, but as beloved saints in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful that you have brought us into your presence and that you have accepted us and called us your children. We thank you for the grace that you have revealed through your son, Jesus Christ, and that he now stands as our mediator and our priest, making intercession for us. Father, we draw near to you this morning. We pray that we would be aware of your presence today, that although we are not fearful, that we would also be respectful and reverent of your presence as well. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that has cleansed us from all sin, Amen. that we might stand in your sight without spot or blemish or any such thing. We pray a blessing on, on everything that we do this morning. May it be found pleasing in your sight as a fragrant offering unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.